Welcome back. Let's now get into the uh, second of our uh, three plays, uh, The Libation Bearers, the uh, sequel to Agamemnon. And this is the one that now introduces the title character of the trilogy of Aristea, uh, Orestes, the son of Agamemnon and Clytemnestra. Orestes himself had been in exile for an extensive period, probably approximately 20 years, since he was a very young child. He was sent away by his nurse, uh, in order to uh, escape um, uh, the uh, gra grasp of his mother, Clytemnestra, around the time of Agamemnon's uh, departure uh, for Troy and the, the murder of, of Iphigenia, uh, Clytemnestra was sufficiently vengeful that it looked like she might uh, turn her vengeance against um, uh, her son, Orestes, and for that reason, Orestes was rescued. You might take note of, of that particular um, possible occurrence, in this case was thwarted, the murder of a child by a mother, that's going to surface uh, with the uh, later story of Medea. But for right now, um, Orestes, out in, in exile, uh, is raised by King Strophius, uh, who is the father of Orestes' close friend, um, Pylades. Electra eventually is able uh, to uh, get uh, word out to her brother, Orestes, uh, once her father, um, uh, Agamemnon, is, is slain. And now in Libation Bearers, in the opening scene, Orestes, uh, assisted by the travel god Hermes, comes back undercover to, to re-enter uh, his, his uh, kingdom uh, to be able to, um, to carry out this, this act of vengeance. And he's operating at the behest of the god who saved him, Apollo. And we're going to see more about Apollo uh, quite a bit in the next play, uh, Eumenides. That will be taken up in the next video. But for right now, Orestes is, is back um, in uh, Mycenae, or Argos uh, for this particular play, and he's going to uh, carry out vengeance against um, uh, both not only Clytemnestra, but also uh, just this, the, the illegitimate um, cousin. So um, much of this play is, is taken up with the, the intrigue of, uh, of how Orestes and Pylades together uh, uh, plot out uh, uh, the, the, the ways to, to get at uh, Clytemnestra and, and uh, uh, just this. And uh, eventually, um, the, the trick comes about that, that Orestes and uh, Pylades uh, pretend to be strangers uh, who come to sojourn uh, temporarily at the palace. And it's while they're within the palace that they're able to, to, to uh, get, get hold of, 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 uh, of Clytemnestra. Now, they don't actually murder her yet, though. The first step is that Aegisthus, um, who uh, is, is uh, uh, wondering what's going on at the palace, uh, uh, th then comes um, around, and the nurse Salissa encourages him to go within the palace uh, without arms, uh, and of course encourages this as well, and so they end up being complicit in the murder as it happens. So uh, Aegisthus goes in, and as soon as he goes in, then of course Orestes grabs, grabs hold of him and slays him, and Clytemnestra uh, sees the murder, and then Orestes seizes her as well, and in fact draws her out, still alive, out to the stage. Now comes the um, high dramatic point of the, of the story which is that Orestes is now confronted with the horrendous decision to slaughter his mother. Matricide was just about as serious um, a, a crime as either regicide or parricide, the, the murder of one's mother, uh, matricide. And so Orestes is about to carry this out, but he's been ordered to do so by the god. So his mother essentially presents herself to him as a suppliant. And at that point, Orestes flinches at the idea of having to kill her and turns to Pylades, uh, begging for help. He says very dramatically in Greek, Tidrasso, what should I do? And he says, I'm flail at the idea of killing my mother. And Pylades reminds him at that point of the command of Apollo. And Orestes, hearing that, thanks Pylades and immediately uh, takes uh, Clytemnestra into, back into the palace and kills her. Well, unfortunately for Orestes, the story doesn't end there, because it turns out that Clytemnestra has an in of some sort with the underworld, because after Orestes dispatches his mother, he is immediately haunted by Furies. That's these characters in the next play. The Furies of Clytemnestra emerge from the underworld, and they start as dreadful, dire monsters, and they come after Orestes, and they can only be seen by him. So he sees them. But the chorus is, cannot see them and is completely baffled. What's going on? What are you talking about? And they, when Orestes dashes off, the chorus sort of very limply says to him, well, goodbye, I hope you, you are well, and he, because they can understand exactly what's happening and they think maybe he's gone out of his mind or something. It is clear that Orestes is distraught uh, from the murder, 
which is, by the way, going to contrast with the way this is treated in both Sophocles and Euripides. But the idea that he would suddenly go completely mad like this uh, doesn't make any sense to anybody else. And so Orestes is going to be haunted by these furies, and it's this, uh, this um, counter-vengeance that uh, Clytemnestra is trying to take out against her son that is now going to line things up for this third play, Eumenides. Okay, so that's Libation Bearers in a quick nutshell, and now come on back immediately for the next video, and we'll conclude the trilogy with uh, Eumenides.